So I am speaking with composer and songwriter Michael Bacon, who has an amazing list of credits to his name, working in film, television, and uh, even performing on stage. Uh, thanks so much for uh, talking with me today. Sure, glad to be here. Um, to start, I guess, I would uh, like to know how, how you found your way into music and what led and what led to film and TV composing. I always, I really can't remember a time that I didn't love music. It felt like the one thing that I really enjoyed more than anything. Um, I loved the instruments themselves. Um, my memories as a child, when I was eight years old, of getting my first cello, I remember vividly the, the room, the lighting, what the varnish smelled like. Um, it was almost like a presence. Uh, so I would go around to, to uh, pawn shops and look in the windows and see if I could find a mandolin banjo or, a, or an old guitar. Um, so I always had sort of a concurrent... Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I always had a concurrent current interest in, I guess, art music or concert music, uh, you know, playing in orchestras. Later, I was a cellist, and later on I played the oboe. And also playing folk music and rock music, uh, you know, playing all the string string instruments. And um, when I finally quit college, I went into music full time uh, with a with a duet called Good News, and we were signed on Columbia Records. And I was pursuing a singer songwriter uh, rock and roll career, and later went out on my own. And I had two CDs from uh, well, they were vinyl released released in Monument on the Monument label, which is in Nashville. And um, when I lived in Nashville, I, people would start, knowing, knowing that I was a songwriter, would start asking me to write songs for their film projects. And I would write the song, and it would go well, and then I'd say, well, why don't you do an instrumental version of the song? And since I knew a little bit about orchestrating, I was able to do that. Um, and eventually I had a pretty good reel of, um, of you know, instrumental films and songs, uh, instrumental uh, film music and songs for films. And um, in the mid-'80s, the disco era hit, and I was, you know, a singer-songwriter with a PA in, the, in my car driving around and playing in schools and co colleges and clubs. And it just started to feel like an awful, like swimming upstream. And I had a kid at that time who was a baby that I had to, you know, be a little more responsible in terms of, financially, so I moved to New York and went into trying to get jobs scoring films, and luckily got a job uh, where they needed someone who knew how to write songs and also knew how to orchestrate, and that was my first job in New York, I guess, some um, 30 years ago, and every job I've had since, I've been able to trace back to that first one. Hmm. That's, that's really cool. Um, I uh, how, who, is there anyone else in your family that was? I know that your brother is a musician as well, but anyone did, who, who, was your mother or your father influenced you? Were they musicians or? They really weren't, um, but they loved music and they had a very eclectic uh, taste. So we had a beautiful uh, monaural FM record and record player. Um, it was actually my father was an architect, and mm. the speaker was built in. And um, it was just a phenomenally beautiful sound that I would fall asleep to, you know, listening to a classical FM station in Philadelphia. But they also listened to folk music. Um, they loved world music. My sisters were rock and roll fans, Elvis. So there were all kinds of music. It was all around the house at all times. And one of my, I have four sisters. And my the sister just above me, we had a junk band in, in high school, which I loved. And we... Um, actually did pretty well and um, got some offers to play in local clubs. And uh, She doesn't do it anymore, but she was a big influence on me, my sister Hilda. And, uh, and now, you know, you've, you've worked, you've done an impressive amount of documentaries, um, among other things, but I always think that this genre must be the most challenging for composers. Do you find it to be a challenge, or at least, I guess not now, but maybe when you started out, was it hard to crack? Well, the, the problem is always getting work, um, but in, in documentaries, it's kind of a small group of people, of editors, directors, and writers, and, and uh, fact-checkers, and um, when there's work around, uh, once you get established as somebody with 
with some ability and somebody who's extremely reliability is a big part of it too because the, the deadlines and the, the body of work that you have to be able to crank out at any moment is, is, is pretty great. Um, so it, t- it takes a while. Yeah, it's, I've never really found, a, I don't approach doing a documentary any differently than I do a feature film. To me, they're all the same challenges. Um, and what it really comes down to is trying to get into the head of the person creatively responsible for the film or television show and figure out what it is that they want the music to do. And I think that's always going to be true in a feature film and a commercial or a documentary or an animated piece. Get into the head and find out what it is that they want the music to do. Um, to achieve what their original goal was for their piece. I think music is always the last hope. Um, it's generally the last thing that goes in. You know, all the scenes have been shot. The script has been written. Everybody's been directed and edited. And um, there's music has to serve to um, achieve those, those initial goals of what this filmmaker is trying to do, but also a lot of sort of, uh, uh, what would you call it, um, band-aids <laughs> where things didn't work out properly and, and you you got to help them fix something. Right. And a lot of times it's not evident to the composers, but um, you can tell when an editor or director is having trouble with a particular scene and really wants the music to, uh, you know, to help it along. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you know what? When when you're scoring any film, not just uh, docs, uh, what what's the one aspect that I guess inspires you the most that um, sparks your creativity more than the rest? What do you think would be the characters, the setting, the plot, the cinematography? Like what what really speaks to you as a as a storyteller? Well, that's a really good question. I have to think a little bit too. Um, I guess I approach it, and probably most film composers do really as an improvisation and um, you obviously need to know the film really well mm-hmm. but you kind of go okay here's drill one Q one and you put it on there and you just kind of start playing along and just seeing what inspires you to follow I guess is so you become intrigued uh, with a motif or idea and you follow it and see if it kind of starts giving back to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if it does, then you kind of start developing it and you start orchestrating it. And um, boom, you've got something to play the client and you move on to the next one. And if you have, let's say you've done the first 10 cues, to me then it's really a time to to bounce it off the creative people, other people in the creative team to see whether you're in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're not, if you're not in the right direction, of course, you are already, then that, that teaches you something, too, because you learn that that's not a direction they're looking for. Right. Uh, so I don't, I, I feel like it's, it's a very collaborative process, a very, very different than writing songs, where, um, yes, you have to be able to write music that you enjoy, that you like, that you're challenged by, but it does have to uh, fit into somebody else's uh, concept. Mm-hmm. And, and I think, yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. When, when you write, are you? Um, I, I mean, I guess, actually, I don't think I've ever asked this to a composer. Do you do you work kind of in a in a sequential, linear fashion? Are you working from Act One to like, to the beginning to the end? Or are you kind of jumping around? Uh, pretty much jumping around. Um, I wouldn't like to go too far into a film without getting some response and feedback. Um, and Generally, what happens in that case is the editors are pretty thirsty for tracks to cut to. Because I start very early. That's sort of always been one of my work modes is mm-hmm. to often I start a year in advance. Um, so that that way I become really a, a generic part of the film rather than something that kind of comes on at the, at the very end. Right. Um, but generally what happens is then once you give the editor the tracks, they will tend to feather the tracks out into other parts of the film. So if you write, let's say you do 10 cues, when you get your go to your first screen, there might be those 10 cues may have turned into 20 cues in other places in the film, and maybe cues that have been written for one particular section that they didn't like, they would they like for something else. Mm-hmm. So I think the important thing is to start to get that back and forth going, where 
you're finding out more and more about what it is that they're thinking about, and they're finding out more and more about what you like to do and what kind of instruments and what kind of sounds. And um, and also now besides uh, scoring, uh, you also uh, or I guess part one of two of, of your band with your brother Kevin, the Bacon Brothers, and oh. uh, and you just released uh, this past November a best of album. What what is what has that journey been like so far? Well, it's been it's been really amazing because we never really planned to have the band last seventeen years. It was really put together kind of as a goof with my brother. He obviously has a very busy and successful acting career, but he is also um, a very brilliant songwriter. And, um, you know, I've been playing music with him pretty much since he could walk. And I'm nine years older, and I taught him how to play the guitar. We played in bands together. He played in, he was a percussionist and played in lots of different musical groups. And I think that he always says that, you know, he kind of always felt like music was taken already, and he really was drawn to acting, but when we put the band together, it really kindled, rekindled something, which was a, you know, a really great ability to communicate lyrically and musically with, with an audience, and um, I've been really so proud and, and just and just delighted to have him as my brother and my partner, and, um, you know, as I said, 17 years and six or seven records, we had no plans for that. Yeah, so the thing I think for both of us is you know, one of the things when you're a freelance person, which we both are, if you're if you're not really busy, you better be looking for work mm-hmm. um, and trying to push your horizons out. Whereas with the band, we sort of let it draw us along. We don't kind of wrangle it into different directions. We wait and see what kind of um, jobs are offered us through our agent, and um, we see what kind of songs are being written by both of us, and... Um, let it kind of play out, and that's a great luxury um, for both of us. And it's been a fantastic, uh, <clears throat> you know, collaboration. Plus, we get it, we spend a lot of time with each other, which we probably wouldn't spend that much time just because we're busy. And um, you know, so you know, like for instance, we were in Hawaii for ten days, and we we're just hanging out. Right. <laughs> and uh, you've, I mean, you scored. Uh... Kevin's two films that he directed too. How well, how well did that brother relationship transfer to the composer director relationship? Well, it was great that he hired me. I mean, I was really, really sweet that he did that. And um, I would say it, there, there's kind of a, a sort of, some sort of requirements that I I need of a director in order to have a you know a satisfying collaboration. One is that you can look and look at something or you can hear something and say I don't like it. Mm-hmm. and this is why, or I like it, and this is why, or I like this part, but I don't like that part, or I like this instrument here, but I don't like it there. And um, he's um, very, very good at doing that, <laughs> and um, very definite, and, um, you know, I found him a very easy director to work with. You know, he knew, he knew what he wanted, and, um, you know, I think I, most of the time is pretty much able to get him what he wanted. And um, and I guess I mean you pointed out I was going to ask you what kind of traits do you like to to find in a, in a director? What over the years of your career, what are the worst traits a director can have? Uh, the, the, by far the worst one is um, indecision, where they don't just come out and say something, and they they say, well I don't know, I'm not sure. Well let me live with this for a while. Um, that is that is you're dead in the water. Um, the other trait that can be difficult is if you're working with a director who fancies him or herself as a musician and wants to communicate with you, um, you know, on musical terms that they may not really be that all sure about. So if they come out and start talking about, well, maybe a major ninth chord, um, then I get a little bit nervous because um, that's not really the way I like to relate to a director in kind of a technical thing. I like to give them choices and moves and compositions that they can just close their eyes and take in in a completely non-intellectual way. And when I see kind of a more technical, intellectual um, kind of uh, 
uh, uh, effort on their part, I get I get a little nervous. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are the two things that have kind of stuck out, and um, I think the the other the other thing that is difficult, um, particularly with documentaries, is you have many many levels of approvals. That generally it's first the editor, and then the producer director, and the writer, uh, and eventually goes up to um, you know, the executive producer's level, mm-hmm. and they're very, very busy people, and they also have very little regard that, um, you know, their schedules and things take a certain amount of time, so that um, if you are getting notes from an executive producer, and it's two days before you have your live record with an orchestra, um, that can lead to a lot of stress, where it could have been done a week before, and you would have some chance of, of amalgamating their uh, thoughts and feelings and the score. So, um, executive producers, and I don't blame them because I know they're they're really stressed and they're they don't have time. You know, they don't really know the day to day kind of process that the composers and editors are going through. But that can be very difficult and, and pretty disruptive. Right. And uh, well, I'll take those to heart because I I come from because I'm 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 more of a writer director who loves film music. I'm not a musician myself, so those are good <laughs> good things not to do then. <laughs> well, I mean, if someone loves music, to me, that's, that's the best thing that a director can do, someone who absolutely loves music mm-hmm. and understands the power and is moved by it. And all the people that I've worked with time and time again are all people like that. They just love music, and they don't know anything about it, and they never feel like they need to um, because they don't as, as directors. Right. That's, I guess that's kind of how I am. I just I, when I was little, it's music that got me into film, and just that's what drives every creative bone in my body is score. So <laughs> um, we can work together. We get along well. <laughs> oh, well, I might take you up on that. <laughs> okay. um, um, I guess to to wrap things up, I always like to ask composers um, if you could score any film ever made with uh, no disrespect to the original composer, what film would you choose? Oh, that's a good one. Oh, wow. Um, the, the trouble with that is, like, for instance, um, one of my favorite scores is William's score to Accidental Tourist. Mm. And I absolutely love the film. I love Ann Tyler as a writer uh, and all those folks. And the William score is just crazy good. I just I love it. And it, it's great with the film, and it's great as a, just a listening thing. Um so that would be one. I mean, that would be a challenge to, you know, rip his score, I mean, take his score off and, and replace it. Um, I teach film scoring, and um, a lot what we do is we, um, for instance, we'll take a piece of, um, let's say, Vertigo, and we, we redo all the Foley and sound effects and stuff so we have a clean track, and then my students will score it. Uh, I think, um, you know, Bernard Herman, Herman um, Hitchcock score, um, would be a really fun challenge, uh, just because the, the music is uh, is sublime and incredibly simple and incredibly complex. So, I would I would love to work on one of the Hitchcock films. Um, the other the other one I, I um, uh, kind of project I would love to do since I've done so many historical documentaries about powerful men in history. I would love to do a, a documentary like I mean not a doc but a like a show like the HBO John Adams, I just think that's a that's a subject um, that I know a lot about, and I feel very qualified to exist in that kind of milieu of historical um, dramas. Yeah. So um, that would that would be great. Those those are those are things. That, plus, I also absolutely would love to do children's animated pro- projects. I do a lot of these uh, books that are um, kind of uh, famous children's books so they do very, very simple animations taking the original uh, the original artist drawings and do these very simple things with its wonderful voiceover and you know, they're totally music driven and over the top and I love doing those and they're only ten minutes long so you don't get too, you know, bogged down in, you know, an hour's worth of music. So I love doing those too. Well those are all really, really great answers. Um but thank you so much Good. for for uh, taking the time to talk today, it was a. a real... uh, I, I appreciate your interest in my work, and I, I love talking about it. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing your your uh, your website.